How would you improve the quality of this video? You might think that it can only be done with larger files and faster internet connections. But no, you can also manage it with more efficient video compression and you'll be able to get both a better quality video and a smaller file size at the same time. A real win-win. Being a YouTuber I need to know very little about this, as long as my videos look ok. But I dabble because I'm interested and today I'm comparing H.264, a current standard, against the newer H.265. Just so you know, there are other types as well. Google's equivalents of these are VP8 and 9, but I'll be using the H's in this video to keep things simple. To really appreciate the differences, please watch this video on YouTube at at least HD quality and with adblock disabled. And subscribe. Seriously though, the higher the quality you watch this video in, the better. Time to start with the lowest quality H.264 that I can use. Ugh. A video of this quality is 3 megabytes per minute. Clearly this is not big enough for it to store all of the information that it needs, but it nicely shows the tricks that the video uses to try and save space. Every frame isn't a whole new image. Most are the same as the older one, but with a few minor updates. You can see smeary marks where this isn't done quite right. Occasionally it will suddenly snap to a better looking version. This is called a keyframe and it's used to refresh the entire picture when the old one becomes too bad to use anymore. These use more file size up, but keep the video quality acceptable. Uh. And lastly, even though this is a full 1920 by 1080 video, it looks a lot lower. This is it admitting that it doesn't have enough resources to do as it's told and it has no choice but to disappoint you with blocky artefacts. It's so sorry. It did its best. Now let's see what it can do if we double the file size. In the first room you can see that there are fewer black smeary traces, the edges of objects are clearer and the lighting is smoother. It's still not perfect by any means, but it's a big improvement. The same for the outside area. To me, that looks far better than twice as good. It's now more on par with what Windows Movie Maker would have given you like 10 years ago. The alternating colour room is still a mess, only a little bit better than it was before in my opinion, but it seems that even low video quality can't stop the guy at the end from looking super sexy. Now moving up again from 5 megabytes per minute to 12, we're finally approaching the low end of acceptable, but it's still low. It's still not enough information to make it look like the resolution it's meant to be, but gone are the horrible streaks across the screen. Colour gradients in the dark room are much clearer, and we can now see all of the leaves and branches outside, even if the grass still looks like toxic slime. The zigzag room still looks blocky, the smoke room looks smoky, and the sexy man still looks sexy. You can see extra details popping up on the walls once the action slows down enough. Videos like slow moving things a lot more. I know you're getting bored, I know you want to see what H.265 can do, so I'm going to skip from 12 to 110 megabytes per minute, which is the highest of this test. Quality is great, as expected. It's still not perfect. Some of the gradients aren't completely smooth and pausing it sees that it skimps on the minor, subtle details but it's up to the level where viewing it on YouTube will look the same as the original would. So for the sake of this video, this is perfect quality. But wait, where's the cutoff where it actually looks perfect you might ask? There isn't one, unless you have a full, uncompressed 60 images a second video that takes up your entire hard drive. With compression, it's a gradual improvement from unacceptable to nigh on perfect, depending on settings. And without seeing all of these different versions, it's going to be tough for you to decide where to draw the line. But life is short, so let's get on to H.265. Starting with the highest quality, where the differences are smallest, but I can say that, from quickly flicking between them, H.265 has slightly clearer edges and better colour gradients without banding and blockiness. But really, the differences are incredibly small, and without the original file, it can be hard at times to know which is more accurate. And now for the exciting bit. Let's move straight on down to the smallest H.264 file again. The blur, the smudges, the blockiness. Disgusting but it is just 3 megabytes per minute. Let's look at how the newer H.265 can do. Night and day difference. No blurring, very clean edges, smoother lighting gradients. What about outside? Oh my, it's like we're looking at trees and grass instead of like a mosaic of some sort. It even has a decent stab at the alternating room, replacing blocky bugs with far less distracting yet somewhat mesmerising wavy lines. The smoke looks like smoke, and the guy at the end looks much sexier. So yeah, it destroys H.264 at the same file size. It easily beats one that's double the size. What a clever codec. I think it finally meets its match when against an H.264 file three times bigger. In some places it's clearly worse, but in others, markedly better. But I'd say that a 2.5 MB.265 file is as good as a 7.5.264 file in this comparison. That's a huge leap in efficiency. This new standard works best in small size videos, which is annoying when you think about it because the internet 10 years ago could really have done with this. So why didn't we have it back then? 
It's to do with how compression works. Instead of remembering 60 different images a second, a video chops scenes up into squares, deciding whether to rotate, move, or to entirely update each bit. For example, Sky doesn't change that much, so it will just say to slide it slowly for a second or so, which uses less information than updating it completely 60 times a second. The older H.264 standard did this as well, but H.265 is far more flexible. It has more commands to use, which lets it more accurately update the image. Plus, it can split the screen up in more ways, using larger blocks to save file size if it thinks it can get away with it. The downside of H.265 is that it needs a more powerful computer to do all of these extra functions. This is why we couldn't have had it 10 years ago. It requires double the power to be able to play a file and takes 10 times longer to make it in the first place, which won't matter if you're only watching the videos. But this exciting journey doesn't stop at H.265. Even this can be improved upon further. Plus it's expensive to license, allowing Google's VP10 and others to succeed it by offering free to use, faster and efficienter video formats in the future. In short, YouTube will look better, will run faster, you'll get higher standards on disc mediums, and the Hacker Known as 4chan will get smaller torrent files.